all right then let's start with the architectural components of microprocessor i hope my voice is audible and clear So the picture that you are watching on the screen, you know, these are the types of registers in 8086 and they are the most important part in the architecture of 8086. Fine, because what we discussed since from the very beginning that a microprocessor contains what? It contains an ALU control unit and the third component is the register array since from the very beginning i'm giving you this thing that it contains a register array so these are the register arrays that we have discussed fine so let's start from the general purpose in the general purpose this category fine so what is the best part in 8086 microprocessor is which was not given in 8085 that every register in the in this microprocessor serves a, a specific job or purpose Fine. So this is the beauty of this 8086. Every process, every register in this processor serves a purpose. But earlier in 8085, when previous processors 808, 008, and 8080, there uh, there was uh, nothing specific. Everything uh, can be done by the any register, but not in this case. So specifically, if I talk about AX. X, wherever you are finding this X in the microprocessor 8086 or any other related to the data, it represents the size of the data and the size of the data is 16 bit. Fine. So that means if A is a register and it is meant to hold the data, the size of data it can hold is a 16 bit. Fine. So AX can hold a 16 bit number. Fine, but what if the number is less than 16 bit? Will it be able to hold? Will it be able to store a number less than 16 bit? Fine, so if that is the case, now AX is further divided in two parts, AH and AL. You can see in the figure, this is your AL and this is your AH. Fine, AL represents the lower 8 bits. AH represents upper 8 bits. Fine. So in total 8 plus 8 that will complete our 16 bit. But what happens in this case is if you want to use only the lower 8 bits the instruction will change into AL. Then you will write AL if you want to use the lower 8 bits only this part lower 8 bits you can see over here this part if you want to use this part only the instruction to use is al all right but if you want to use the upper 8 bits somehow lower 8 bits are already occupied you can't use that fine so that what we are left with we are left with upper 8 bits of register a which is micro which is accumulator fine so in that moment the instruction will take a H. What we need to write in the instruction is A H. Fine. So this is how these things will work. And like you, I have already told you, if you are watching accumulator in any structure, that structure belongs to one human. Fine. And like we have already seen in the last class, one human means accumulator acts like bridge between input output and the ALU. Fine. So every input passes through the accumulator once and the output which is coming out of ALU will be passing through the accumulator. Okay, so this is the most important register of your 
any microprocessor accumulator if it is having an accumulator. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, let me give you a little hint of the programming. Let me give you a little uh, more understanding about the system. Let's have an example from the programmer's point of view. What will be wrong? What will be right? What we need to take care while doing the programming. Suppose I'm taking an instruction, very simple instruction, move. Move stands for data transfer. So when there is a transfer, there are two places. One will be source, one will be destination. So what we need to define is what will be the source and what will be the destination. So I write in that way, D comma S. S stands for source and D stands for destination and they both can be any register they both can be any register fine so let's see how we can write the instruction that was the syntax you can say it is a syntax but in actual the instruction let's say let's say i want to transfer the contents of al to B L. So what we need to take here, what we need to take care here is the size. The size should match. A L is of 8 bit. B L will be of 8 bit. That is fine. Particularly no problem. Fine. Next instruction. Let's see. Move. Let's say. H comma D H. So I'm transferring the contents of upper 8 bits of D register to upper 8 bits of A register. This is what H means. They are again of 8 bytes. 8 bits, I'm sorry. That means the source is same, destination is same. This instruction is perfect, no problem. But see the problem, what, where the mistakes will take place. If I say, in this case, tell me what is happening here. The source is BL and the destination is AX. What is going to happen in this particular case? Tell me. Tell me what is happening here. See what I just told you that it is a syntax where it is mentioning source and destination. Source is what? So source is of lower bits of B register. Fine. So this rule is common for all the registers. When L is written, this means lower eight bits. When H is written with any register, it will be upper eight bits. So uh, let it be B, let it be C, let it be D. L means lower side, H means upper side, both divided into 88 bit pattern. Fine. So in this case, if I say BL, BL, what is the size of BL? Anyone? The BL is of what size? It will be of 8 bits. Fine. And X, when it is having an X and A, that means the size of the so destination will be of 16 bit. That means I'm transferring the 8 bit data into the 16 bit destination. That means what? You are loading 8 bit data into a 16 bit register. That means there is this instruction is not valid. The source and destination both are not matching. Fine. So never use these kind of instructions. It will give you logical error. Same is the case with move DL comma AX. Now here the source is 16 bit A register. X is associated. So that case the source is of 16 bit and the destination is of 8 bit. That in that case it is also mismatching. Okay. So that way register A this instruction is still not holding any ground because the source is bigger than the destination. You will have loss of data in this particular case. So avoid these two instructions which are written at the bottom because they will not be understood by the 
microprocessor. Above two ones are perfectly fine, no problem in that. All right, is that clear? Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If any doubt arises in, in between, you can ask me anytime. Okay, so this was only for register A. Now let's talk about register B. Why I'm taking each an individual register? Because they all have a purpose. Like B stands for base register. B stands for base register. It will be uh, dealing with the base register. Now ask me, what is a base register? Ask me. Someone please ask me that what is a base register? Because we have not discussed anywhere anything, anything related to base. We have studied five, six, seven classes in eight zero eight six, but we never talked about what is the base. Fine, then what it is now? What could be base? Fine. So the base is actually related with the current. location of your pointers the current location of pointers which pointers data pointer and address pointer currently they are locating to which particular region that region will be your base all right let me make you more clear in last class we discussed that 8086 particularly has been divided into four segments which are available for the programmer so if i say the first segment is the data segment we have discussed in last class next is code then stack segment and then extra segment fine so what is going to happen the moment you are writing a code that code will be stored in various various segments because Code segment will only store the opcode part. Data segment will store the operand part, which is a data. Stack related operations will be utilized in stack. Extra dealings will be stored in the extra segment register. Fine. This is what we discussed in the last class. So what is going to happen? The program will keep changing its position from code, starting from code to data, or maybe from uh, data to back to code, then extra then to stack fine so what is going to happen in this case the program in the memory structure is shifting the program itself is shifting something from one segment to another segment then what is that thing the base the base of program is getting shifted from various segments so what we need to identify what we need to take care current location what i have already given you the current location of pointers data pointer and address pointer if currently these two are in the data segment that means ds the base will become data segment ds fine if the current location pointer is in stack segment then the base register will become the stack segment so what will happen in this case when base register will become this will become what so whatever the value we are having once we are saying the base the base is shifting is yes, it will keep shifting the address inside this bx register will keep shifting and it will be dependent on what it will be dependent on i am reminding this thing again and again it will be dependent on what these registers that we discussed in last class ds data segment register code segment register stack segment register extra segment register fine 
it deals with all these registers so what is going to happen let's put a value so what registers will be giving us they will be giving us the starting location of the memory segment from where the segment is starting in the memory let's let's just put a random value I'm just putting a random value let's say data segment is starting from 2000 code segment is starting from 3000 stack segment is starting from 4000 and extra segment is starting from 5000 okay so these are the values inside the registers ds having this 2000 cs having 3000 ss having 4000 es having 5000 all right so these are the values inside the registers so what is going to happen now just try to understand the process the moment you are having the code and the code first transfers into the code segment because the first part of the instruction will be always of code how many of you agree on that part the first part of the instruction will always be of code Kitne log bolte hai, sahi baat hai. because what we discussed that an instruction comprised of comprises of two things op code and operand right so how many of you say what will be the first part of the instruction instruction ka pehla part kya hona chahiye op code ya operand op code ka matlab hai the operational code the command which tells us or the machine what to do and operand is on which op code will operate the data all right, so what do you suggest? What should be the first? Op code pehle aana chahiye ya operand pehle hona chahiye? Think logically. Op code. Op code, sir. Think logically. This is just a wonder. All of you to think like a machine. Hum pehle usko kaam karna batayenge ya ye batayenge kis pe kaam karna hai? Operand. Sir, operand. Sir, operand. operand. Operand, operand, okay. Operand pehle de doge aur ye bataoge ki kaam baad mein karna hai. To wo shayad pehle operand ko hi dhoondta rega. Agar hum operand pehle de denge, that this is the data. Fine. Aur yes. next cycle mein aap doge usko operation. To pehle to usne data ko fetch kar liya. Thik hai? Aur data fetch karne ke baad ab wo kya kar raha hai? Operation fetch kar raha hai. In between operation in, interrupt ho gaya. So data pehle fetch ho gaya. Or instruction or operation ki fetching ke beech mein interrupt a gaya. So data or op, uska op code ka link to toot gaya na. Because op code jo hai. Op code may already kuch aise cheeze hoti hain jo program ke sequence ko bhi set up karte hain. All right. Ab aap ek meri ek baat ka jawab do. You must have seen somewhere in the flow charts. Flow charts mein hum control decision making box banate hain usme. Theek hai? If if then there is a rhombus. There is condition inside. If condition is true, go to that path. Yes path. If condition is false, go to no path. Decision box बनाते हैं flow chart में, ठीक है? तो if is what? If क्या है? Command है या data है? हम condition पहले command. check करते हैं. Command. हम condition पहले check कर रहे हैं कि दो condition satisfy हो रही हैं या फिर सब सबसे पहले data रख कर रख देते हैं. हम सिर्फ दो variables की checking कर रहे हैं कि if a is greater than b, तो if is what? If data है या code है? Sir, code. Code, right? Yes. Just have a logical understanding. Hamesha op code pehle aega. Code pehle aega. Jo patayega aap data ke upar karna kya hai. Thik hai? So there is a sequence we have to follow. So in the instruction, on a general note, op code will come first. Thik hai? So when we talk about op code, that means the first section. So, the section of our segment connect hoga, that will be your code segment. Fine. So, base register may ho kya kya? Now, see what is going to happen in the base register. Base register will have the value of 
कोर सेगमेंट रजिस्टर तो कोर सेगमेंट रजिस्टर के पास जो भी वैल्यू अवेलेबल है एट दैट मोमेंट व्हेन बी एक्स इज कनेक्टेड इन द द बेस ऑफ द प्रोग्राम इज कोर सेगमेंट ऐसे समझो अभी प्रोग्राम जो है उसका बेस है कोर सेगमेंट जैसे कोर सेगमेंट में बेस होता है तो कोर सेगमेंट रजिस्टर के अंदर जो भी वैल्यू होगी वो बी के अंदर कॉपी हो जाएगी तो बी एक्स विल बी हैविंग द वैल्यू ऑफ कोर सेगमेंट जो मैं बताएगा कि करंट बेस प्रोग्राम का क्या है थ्री थाउजेंड और ये थ्री थाउजेंड कहां से आया कोर सेगमेंट से राइट नाउ द बेस चेंजेस फ्रॉम कोर सेगमेंट टू डेटा सेगमेंट तो डेटा सेगमेंट की वैल्यू क्या होगी डेटा सेगमेंट की वैल्यू कॉपी हो जाएगी थ्री थाउजेंड टू टू थाउजेंड और यहां से हमें पता लग रहा है कि बेस इज चेंजिंग दैट मीन्स प्रोग्राम इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम वन सेगमेंट टू और मूविंग फ्रॉम वन सेगमेंट टू अनदर सेगमेंट नेक्स्ट इफ इट इज अगेन शिफ्टिंग फ्रॉम डेटा सेगमेंट टू स्टैक सेगमेंट और मे बी बैक टू कोर सेगमेंट ठीक है तो इफ इट इज गोइंग बैक टू कोर सेगमेंट अगेन द वैल्यू विल बी थ्री थाउजेंड फाइन इफ नाउ इट इज शिफ्टेड टू स्टैक सेगमेंट The value of stack segment will be loaded into the base register. Fine. And if finally the base gets uh, connected to the extra segment, the value of extra segment will be loaded into the BX register. Are you getting my point? What is the meaning of base? The base is the current location of the program and its pointers, data and address pointer. Fine. So where, whichever segment it is right now. वो जिस भी सेगमेंट में है दैट वैल्यू विल बी हाईलाइटेड और इट विल बी लोडेड इन दी एक्स दैट्स वाई वी कॉल दिस थिंग बेस रजिस्टर वो बताता है प्रोग्राम का बेस कहां पे वो करेंटली कहां पे एग्जीक्यूट हो रहा है ओके इज इट क्लियर यस सर किसी को डाउट है इसमें एनी वन डाउट है तो बताओ नो प्रॉब्लम मैम clear right now anyone anything all right if there is nothing that is not the case uh, let's talk about the next register we are having the register c now there is not much of a discussion because those a and b were the most crucial so let's talk more about The register C. Now C, C X, again divided in two parts, C H and C L. It is specifically for the operations of loop, and the C stands for count. Fine. So whenever you are uh, using a loop in eight zero eight six microprocessor, count means the value of the number of strands you want the loop to continue. Fine. So whatever the count, how many times you want that loop to run and rerun, that is the count value. If you want that, uh, let's say the count value is four, and you want that to be uh, disrupted at one. You're starting from five, and you want that uh, loop to end by, let's say zero, to avoid confusion. So how many times it will? Uh, And create strands five, four, three, two, one. So exactly five number of times. Fine, because at zero it will exit. Fine. So whenever we are having something related to loop, we have a continuous operation, and there is a value which is called count, which is associated with this. Fine. So which register are we going to use? Is always register C for the count. No else. ए नहीं यूज होगा बी नहीं यूज होगा सी ओनली फॉर द काउंटिंग ऑपरेशन वेन वी आर हैविंग लूप बहुत सिंपल है सी के अंदर डेटा लोड करो और जस्ट सिंपली यूज अ कमांड लूप फाइन लूप बाई डिफॉल्ट इज हार्ड वायर कनेक्टेड टू द रजिस्टर सी सो इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली चेक वॉट इज इन साइड सी तो जो भी सी के अंदर होगा जो भी वैल्यू आपने लोड करी है वट एवर इट इज इट विल रन द लूप स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट to that particular number of times let's say n is the count so that will run for n minus 1 number of times or n number of times depends where it ends 
Fine. So the C is for count, that is for loop operations. Fine. And D, last one, D is for data. So we have all having a specific purpose A for accumulator, B for base, C for count, and D is for data. So wherever you have, whenever you are having any data, you want to store it somewhere. So this is the actual general purpose register, which can be used for many, any purpose. You want to store it, just store it. You want to copy it somewhere, you can use it for multiple things. So this is the actual general purpose, which is having a general purpose, not a specific purpose like A, B and C. This is only for storage of data. DX, that's it, nothing, no other. Uh, discussions about this D for data. Fine. So next we have uh, in these we have already discussed uh, now the general purpose registers. In the last class, I told you about the segment registers. So let's talk about index registers now. Fine. So in index. Basically, there are two registers in index. Those who are having an I in the end, they basically belongs to the index part. Fine. Uh, what we have in the index is all right. So next we have is index registers identification i in the end fine what are these two si and dei si stands for source index and destination index for dei fine and there are uh, what there is one more set of uh, registers we are having which is called pointer register Fine. Pointer registers are BP and SP. BP stands for base pointer and SP stands for stack pointer. All right. So let's start with the pointer first. So what we know about this base pointer. Base pointer is exactly associated with BX which is the base register definitely fine then pointer is something uh, okay so someone please tell me about pointer what is a pointer something something please uh, please tell me what do you understand by a pointer quick anyone an answer all right so let's uh, have a look at this memory which is in the form of this array kind of thing so base is if i say this particular value which is inside this particular register is called a base value but pointer is something which keeps moving from one location to another location fine so base pointer is moving always it keeps moving from one to another but the bx register will get the values from the base registers which is get shifted into the various segments so segments will give value to the base register but but it will not remain like this value because base code segment starting value start Fine, because there will be a program next time you have program apna load kara, dust location is nearly the next time those key location will be three zero one zero next location from the previous program. It goes like this. So pointer will keep moving according to the variations in the base value. It will point to the current uh, current value in the base. Where should we start? Where should we end? So this is the pointer related with the base register. 
Fine. And SP, SP is the pointer related with the stack. Stack pointer. So, but I know there's something about stack. I don't know. I, I, I think I must have forgotten about stack. Anyone, something about stack? Anyone? Am I audible? Am I audible? Am I not disconnected? I yes, sir, audible, sir. Why nobody is speaking? Is it really tough to answer? Is it really tough to answer? Stack pointer and everything. Okay, what is stack memory? What is stack memory? Anyone? To store the collection of data. Then what is the difference between other memories? RAM, ROM, they are also doing the same thing. Then why we have created something separately called stack? It's a temporary data. Wait, wait, wait. One by one, one by one. One by one, please. Aap koi nahi so it's temporary and it uses lasting first out. Okay, so, uh, fine, no problem. Not always. Okay, so stack. Mm, uh, I'll show you stack something in some other class because stack is somewhere related with the moment of the pointer. The stack operation basically is more uh, concerned about the moment of the stack pointer, how the stack pointer is getting its movement. Fine. So basically, in the stack, if I tell you how much time we are having, it's already 11.3. So leave the stack right now because the stack is a different issue. I have to make you understand in the next class or we'll take it in tutorial. So let's uh, get back to the index register so that we could be able to finish the index. So index is source index or destination index. That means what? They, when there is a, a flow of the program which is getting altered the program shifts its location from one place to another place or sometimes we call it jump or sometimes we call it call a program changes its normal routine from one location to another location so we need to take care of few things from where it is getting altered wo uska source kya hai jahan se wo indexing from where it is jumping to a next location and destination index is what where it is getting shifted so there will be two values that will be stored always in two registers which are tracking this is what we call tracking the movement of the program or the control of the program when the program is moving from one place to another place it is jumping from one place to another place so there will be a source the value which is going to be stored in the source index and then going to be stored in the destination index why they are needed because if from the destination the job is finished and the program needs to get back to source so that moment it needs the value from the source index fine for connecting to the destination again it needs the value of destination sometime again so these two values will be stored in the registers which are called index register and specifically source index and destination index fine so these are called index registers which keeps the tracking of your 
moment of your program. Okay, so what we are left with uh, the registers is this. The status and control. In status and control, flag and IP. These are uh, not IP, IP is also important. The flag register of 8086, it is very important. Very, very important. Fine, it can give you straightforward five marks question. Fine, so I will take it little later because along with flag, there are so many things we need to understand because it is uh, operational stuff. And IP will be understood only in the architecture. So in the next class, when we, I'll be showing with the architecture's animation, it will be more clear. Yes, fine. So, in today's class, what we discussed is about the registers, their operations, what they are meant, uh, like at A stands for accumulator, how it operates, what is the meaning of AHAL, few instructional uh, complications, AHAL, AXBL, transfer of source and data, then register B, which is your base register, how it shifts its value, how program changes from one segment to another segment, and how the value will keep changing in, in, in this uh, base register. Fine, the next is your register C. Register C basically deals with the count, the value of the count which is to be loaded into the register C, which is uh, the counting value of the loop. So, C register is basically for looping, D is for general purpose data storage, SIDI tracks the movement of the program from where to where, point registers, BP, SP, BP is associated with base pointer, BP gives, BX gives you the starting value of the segment, but after the segment starting value, where the actual movement is, where the actual location is, that will be given by the BP. All right, next is stack pointer. The pointer associated with the stack is called stack pointer. 